Shove it, man! All right, shovers, hope you're all looking forward to Halloween. Or if you hate Halloween like me, just find Billy Corgan and smash that pumpkin head in. Couple quick announcements for those of you who haven't heard. Jimmy Rave has now had both his legs amputated, so the Hawks' thoughts are with him at this time. Also, I'm still fundraising for Baru, the eight-year-old obese Indian boy. Let's see if we can reach $1,000, and if we do, the Hawk might just do something crazy. You'll have to wait and see. Link's in the description below. I'm very excited for today's episode of Ring of the Hawk, especially as I haven't looked at Lucha Underground since the Angelico video. That's not on YouTube right now, by the way. I'll put it back up sometime. Anyway, Angelico got a B on Season 1 Ring of the Hawk, and it was a run which filled me with a lot of joy. So hopefully the Hawk goes to bed in my nest happy tonight. If not, let's fight. Today's video was a YouTube request made by a whole bunch of people, most notably Austin Sanchez and Duffy is back. So enjoy the video, or give you a smack. And of course... If you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, <coughs> shove their name in the comment section, Jack! Okay, okay, Jake Strong. If you call him Swagger, you'd be wrong. Match 1, Trio's Championship. The champions Willie Mack, Killshot and Son of Havoc who get the jobber treatment with no entrance versus Big Bad Steve. Sammy Cavera and Jack Swagger, who is going as the savage Jake Strong. This is from 2018, by the way, so after his WWE run, but before his AEW run. What a couple of random teams we have here. It's going to be hard not to call him Swagger for me in this video, so screw it, I'll call him whatever I feel like at the time. He doesn't start the match anyway, he waits patiently on the outside as the small men take themselves out. Swagger then comes in with a kick on kill shot, but then he gets sent out of the ring. Thanks for coming. He gets another kick from the apron and then walks around the ring like a moron. Swags does come back in later with a splash, but that's about it. Later on, he tries a charge in the corner on Killshot who fakes his kick and then Swagger falls for it and he gets booted with the other leg. Swagger then puts the ankle lock on Killshot who taps out, but the ref is distracted. Willie Mack tries to get him off, but Swagger keeps no-selling his offense, so Mack takes a run up and gets him off with the bicycle kick. Son of Havoc wins the match with a shooting star on Big Bad Steve, which is probably the last time I'll ever say this ridiculous name in my life. This potentially could be an S. Swagger is livid about the loss and he completely destroys two teammates after the match. Then he turns on his own manager and puts on the ankle lock. There's a funny sound effect of an ankle snapping. Oh, wow. Then he gets the crowd to all chant strong, which was cool. This was enough for me to upgrade the segment to a D. Match 2. Oh, it's Big Bad Steve again. I guess I was wrong. He's accompanied by his manager, Beautiful Brenda, whose name is overstated. And he takes on our guy, Jake Strong, whose hair seems to have turned green for the mould in the Lucha Underground locker room. Swagger punches him in the gut in the corner. He wants a suplex, but Big Bad Steve fights off and he starts punching Swagger, but he no-sells it. Swagger dumps him on his ass and then punches him in the back in the corner. Swagger continues throwing punches from the outside of the ring. He comes back in the ring with a body press from the corner. This match is only going one way as Swagger hits a running clothesline. He puts on the ankle lock and Steve proves that he's not big and bad by tapping out. After the match, Swagger hits a fucking gut wrench power bomb on the outside of the ring. He seems to be a much less goofy character in Lucha Underground. He's focusing on aggressiveness and I'm liking it. This match is also a D, but I sense he's holding a lot back here. Match 3, Sammy Guevara vs Jack Swagger. Swagger immediately hits a German suplex, then he picks him up and hits another one, but this time he releases it. Swagger then takes a big run up and hits the splash from the corner. Swagger tries the running clothesline, but misses and the crossbody takes him out of the ring. It doesn't go well for Sammy on the outside and he gets his goofy teeth smashed into a desk and then thrown into a pile of chairs. It sounds like how I spent my time at school. Sammy is terrified and he starts trying to climb a ladder. Swagger stops him and tries an ankle lock, which is a pretty cool image. Sammy fights it off and starts climbing again. He makes it to the top of a balcony and then he hits a damn moonsault off the top, and it looked pretty much like he missed it too. Sammy is somehow up straight away and he delivers three kicks to Swagger. He chucks him in the ring and tries a springboard clothesline. Swagger sidesteps it and puts on the ankle lock for the end of the match. The attack continues on the ankle after the match, but there's no silly sound effect this time. Apparently he's doing a gimmick where he steals the clothes of the opponents he's defeated. This one's a C, good shit. Match 4, Jack Swagger vs Aerostar. This one is like David vs Goliath. Swagger pats him on the head, which Aerostar doesn't like. Swagger quickly shuts him up with a big vertical suplex. 
Aerostar manages to hit a kick in the corner and runs it in with a head scissors. Then he gets a two from a crucifix pin. Swagger looks frustrated at this point. Aerostar hits a diving kick from the top and another springboard kick from the ropes. Swagger looks like he's dumping in his nappy. Aerostar tries a third dive but this time he gets caught and thrown across the ring. Swagger puts on the ankle lock and this match is done. Swagger wants to continue the attack after the match but he's run off by Drago with nunchucks. Swagger beats his chest at him. The crowd were dead for this one. It's a D, not feeling it. Match 5, Jack Swagger vs Drago. This match starts exactly the same as the last with a suplex attempt and aggressive punches. Swagger successfully hits a back suplex next but Drago fights off the next one. Drago then speeds up the pace but not for long as Swagger spears his legs. Swagger tries out a new submission now but it doesn't work as well as his ankle lock. He continues to try and keep the cruiserweight grounded as this is now a completely different match to the last one. Drago tries a crossbody but he gets caught. Swagger tries to power slam him which Drago reverses into a big DDT. Drago has a chance now and he hits a drop kick for a two before Swagger dumps him out of the ring. It doesn't go well for Drago on the outside because Swagger back body drops him across some chairs. Swagger takes it back into the ring where he hits the body press and then he locks on the ankle lock for the tap out win. After the match he grabs Drago's nunchucks but Aerostar makes the save. The cruiserweights both escape before any more harm can come to them. Again, not as good as you would expect. I want to see him start unlocking his extra gears. This one's a D. Match 6. 2 on 1 nunchuck handicap match. Who booked this shit, Russo? It's Drago and Aerostar vs Jake Strong. Swagger throws Aerostar out the ring and then he catches Drago's dive. Aerostar kicks them both over. The two little men try to work together but they get clotheslined down. Swag sends them into corner and then there's an awkward look between Drago and Strong for some reason before he crushes them. Drago charges up the steps to get some nunchucks next. Whilst that's going on, Swagger catches Aerostar for his dive and throws him into Drago. He starts throwing the two cruiserweights into walls before he misses an attack and crashes into a wall and hurts his knee. Drago then climbs onto Aerostar's shoulders and sprays him into mist. Now they're the same height, Drago starts smacking Swagger in the head with nunchucks. This is rather stupid though as Swagger could just kick Aerostar to take them both out. He eventually does a kick but it's not the sort of kick I wanted to see. He then picks Drago up like a bowling ball and bowls him across some chairs. Aerostar runs away up a ladder to get another weapon. Swagger meets him up there and looks like he's dumping in his nappy of fear. They fight up in the rafters where Swagger teases throwing Aerostar to the ground. Then Swagger punches him off the balcony and it sounds like he goes for a table but who knows. He still has to deal with Drago though who's putting everything into these nunchuck shots. Swagger doesn't like this weapon gimmick and instead uses his fists. Out of nowhere Aerostar dives down on top of him for a balcony. I love the Lucha Underground Arena, it's like something you would get when you played with wrestling figures as a kid. Swagger's in real trouble now as both of his opponents have nunchucks. In the ring they rain down on him. Swagger eventually has enough and he kicks one friend down and he slams the other. Swagger tries a double press but he can't manage it. Drago hits a DDT and Aerostar hits a springboard splash. Swagger kicks out despite both men being on top of him. Jack then dumps Drago out the ring. He reverses a head scissors from Aerostar into a gut wrench powerbomb. He puts on the ankle lock and it's over. After the match Drago also gets the ankle lock and then <laughs> they play the silly ankle snapping sound effect again. Oh! That aside, this was the best match so far. It's a B. Match 7, 7 way battle royal. PJ Black vs Aerostar vs Hernandez vs Steve who is neither big nor bad vs King Cuerno vs Jack Swagger vs Dante Fox. Swagger clotheslines both PJ and Quano to the ring apron. Then he throws Dante Fox who kicks them both out to eliminate them. Aerostar tries a springboard dive but Swagger easily eliminates him. Jack does struggle to eliminate Dante Fox. He springboards into the ring to send Swagger back into the ropes but he recovers and hits a clothesline. Swagger eventually dumps him out the ring to eliminate him and win the match. So Jack Swagger had a hand in eliminating almost all of the guys in the match so he has to get a B for this. Swagger then has an argument with the manager of Lucha Underground who seems to be an old man with dementia wearing an old lady's grey wig. At least he's continuing to build a more serious character. He asks for more competition. Match 8, main event that same night. Jack Swagger vs Johnny Mundo. Most high profile match for him so far. Swagger holds on to Johnny's midsection and won't let go but Johnny eventually throws him off. It doesn't help him as Swagger hits him with a belly to belly. Surprisingly first time I've seen that in this video. Johnny fights back and kicks him down but he can't get the free. They fight on the ring apron with Swagger sending him into the ring pole. On the outside of the ring Swagger slaps him so hard he hurts his own hand. 
Back in the ring, Swagger shows his stamina and starts hitting running splashes and clotheslines. He's running all over the place. Johnny seems like he's done, so Swagger tries the corner body press, but it's blocked by Johnny Mundo. Jack Swagger then tries a slam, which is reversed into a DDT by Johnny. He's back in it now, and he hits a knee strike and a kick to the face. The standing shooting star press only gets a two for Johnny Mundo. Johnny is now in full control, and he starts trying to do parkour. He ends up on the top rope where he tries some high flying, but it doesn't go well for him as Swagger stops him and he bounces all over the place. Swagger follows him to the outside of the ring where Johnny starts diving up the crowd rail. Swagger puts the ankle lock on up there, but Johnny dumps a fan's Coke Zero all over Swagger to force him to let go. Johnny then does some more parkour across the entranceway, but Swagger can't do parkour. Johnny Mundo sets him up across a crowd barrier where he eventually hits a sunset flip powerbomb onto the ring mats below. Jack Swagger might be done now, as in the ring Johnny hits a spinny elbow thing from the top. Johnny starts wasting time and he pays for it eventually, as Swagger stops him on the top rope and he hits an overhead suplex. Swagger quickly runs and hits the big body press, but this is just a two count. The match turns again and Johnny hits a Russian leg sweep, but he can't nail his following dive. Swagger then almost rolls him up and tries the ankle lock, which Mundo fights off. Johnny hits one of his signature hippie moves, the Moonlight Drive, for another two count, and we get a double down. They both make it up at 9 and they trade punches. Johnny tries a kick which was a bad choice so Swagger catches it and puts on the ankle lock. He looks like he's rolled Swagger off but he just won't let go. Then he boots Swagger in the slash zone to finally get him off. Mundo nails the starship pain but Swagger no sells it and he puts on another ankle lock. Mundo taps out to end a highly competitive wrestling match. It wasn't incredible but it was solid for sure, it's a B. Match 9 for the vacant Gift of the Gods title, 7 way elimination match, King Cuerno vs Steve who is neither big nor bad with Famous B, vs Hernandez vs Aerostar vs PJ Black vs Jack Swagger vs Dante Fox. Swagger sent out the ring straight away so it's not exactly a good start. Dante Fox hits a dive to the other 6 men on the outside. Hernandez is eliminated by a Dante Fox backslide in the first 2 minutes, I'm surprised it wasn't Steve. Swagger fights Dante Fox on the outside and slams him into a table, and then they hug each other as they walk up the steps. Dante tries a springboard hurricanrana up on the balcony, which Swagger blocks and power bombs him into a wall. Steve, who is apparently a former mechanic, starts using a wrench on everyone, which is okay for some reason in this match. The crowd start a Steve chant. I never thought I'd hear that at the start of this video. Swagger's now in the ring fighting PJ Black, who hits a springboard eye poke. Then he boots Swagger in the nutsack. PJ hits a beautiful moonsault on him, but this is just a two count. He almost rolls him up again, but Swagger rolls straight through into the ankle lock and PJ Black taps out. It does the funny ankle snapping sound effect again. Why? It's so stupid. Steve is actually starting to grow on me though, and he hits the three quarter cutter. Always like that move. But this isn't a video about him. Shut up or I'll smack you one. Anyway, my new favourite character Steve is eliminated by Aerostar after he dives off a massive forklift. Swagger did take some time out of this match, but now he's back. He picks up Aerostar with the body slam. He also gives King Cueno a suplex. Swagger's in full control and he gets a two count off a power slam. King Cueno almost gets tapped out before Aerostar saves him with a springboard. Aerostar also hits a head scissors. The little man then falls like a tree in the forest from the top rope onto Swagger, but he still can't put him away. Swagger eventually has enough of all this playing around and throws Aerostar into the air and puts him straight into the ankle lock to tap him out. Just three men left now. Swagger almost gets the ankle lock on again, but is sent to the outside and is blasted by a Koeno suicide dive. The dives continue when everyone is wiped out by a massive Dante Fox dive. Dante hits a 450 on Koeno and has him beat, but Swagger thinks he's back in the WWE being a goofball and he breaks up the pin for no reason at all. All three men keep almost beating each other as Dante Fox almost beats Argyle with a springboard cutter. Dante tries to put him away with a swan top, but Swagger gets his knees up. We get a triple down with everyone kicking each other. Dante Fox eliminates Cuerno to bring us to a one on one situation. The Fox man keeps availing Swagger and he drop kicks him off the apron. Back in the ring, Fox hits a super kick for a two count. Dante Fox suddenly makes a mistake and Swagger puts on the ankle lock. After a few minutes, Fox eventually quits. The crowd chant this is bullshit as Swagger is crowned the gift of the gods champion. In a way, I see what they mean. He hasn't really done much apart from ankle locks. Oh, speaking of ankle locks, we get a post-match attack with the ankle snapping sound effect again. The match was great, but we're grading the individual here. Almost all of these guys did more impressive things. Even Steve. Swagger just doesn't feel like a good fit in this company. It's a C. Match 10, final match, and also the final episode of Lucha Underground. 
Swagger has a mic and he addresses Pentagon Dark, who is the Lucha Underground champion. It's a similar thing to Option C in TNA, or the Money in the Bank briefcase, where you can trade in the Gift of the Gods title and cash in and get a world title shot whenever you want. Jack Swagger vs Pentagon Dark for the title. Pentagon Dark is dead in the ring. Jack Swagger puts on the ankle lock and it's game over. For the second match in a row, the crowd chant bullshit as Lucha Underground finishes. What a journey it's been! Fresh faces have emerged! It's an S, there's literally nothing good to say. So that's it, Jake Strong went out as the last Lucha Underground champion as the promotion faded away. If they'd stayed in business, his life would be completely different right now. So we've got to give this guy a final grade and see if he can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. And that's kind of a tricky one to do. Swagger's obviously a good wrestler, but I don't feel like he was a good fit in Lucha. The show was known for being batshit crazy, and those who couldn't do crazy dives made up for it with crazy characters. Swagger was just sort of... boring. I praise him for being a more serious character here on the show, and this run certainly helped shed his goofball persona, but it just wasn't quite as good as I'd hoped. He just stood out so much here surrounded by craziness. I really enjoyed the Lucha Underground show yet again, but remember we're focusing on Swagger's performance, and I think... a C is fair, based on what I saw. When I think of the B tier, I think of wrestling runs that I would enjoy going back to watch. This wouldn't really be one. I'm glad he's settled into a more fitting role for himself nowadays, and if you don't agree with that, I'll rip off your skin and peel it back.